What's going on guys? In today's video, we're gonna be getting started with installing an upgraded power steering cooler for my Nissan 370Z. So this here is an upgraded one from Stillen. It's a 10 row oil cooler that's gonna be able to keep the power steering fluid temperatures down. So I have friends that have 350Zs, G35s and all that stuff and they do not have any kind of power steering cooler at all. Now because of that, those cars go through power steering pumps left, right and center. So if you're beating on the car and you're doing a lot of turning left to right, you're gonna be heating up that power steering fluid and it's going to boil. If it boils and gets too hot, there goes your pump. So. On the 370s and the G37s, you're gonna find something like this. This is an OEM power steering cooler. So Nissan saw that they need to fix this problem and they did. If you're just doing a regular drive here and there on Sunday and you're not really beating on the car, this here is perfectly adequate. However, if you beat on the car a little bit more, you're gonna need an upgrade. So even after going to the track for my first time in the Z, I noticed that the fluid actually started to boil. So we're gonna be taking out not only all the regular power steering fluid that's in there, we're gonna be changing that out with better synthetic fluid, but we're also gonna be changing over that cooler to something that can basically shut off heat a little bit better. So with that being said, let's get started with taking off the old power steering cooler. So this right here is the power steering cooler. Now the lines that are going to it are gonna be found to the left of it. Now any of you guys that are located in the States have it easier than I do because my windshield washer reservoir is a little bit bigger and bulkier than yours. However, we're gonna to have to slightly disconnect it and move it out of the way so we can get access to the lines that are found down in here because that's where we're gonna be needing to disconnect the OEM lines and we're gonna to need to drain everything from there. So let's get started. So because we're gonna be taking out all the fluid that's inside the system and then we're gonna be replacing it with the full synthetic stuff, uh, we're gonna try and remove as much as the fluid as possible right now. So spinning this, as you can tell, doesn't do anything. If you lift it up, you'll be able to get access to the power steering reservoir. Now, I'm gonna be using this Capri vacuum brake bleeder to basically suck out as much of the fluid as possible that's found inside the reservoir. So that's gonna basically make it so that all the fluid that's inside the system is going to be minimized. So if you guys can, empty the reservoir first. So next up, we're gonna be disconnecting the power steering cooler from the front part of the vehicle. So there's gonna be two 10 mil bolts both found on the bottom that we need to take off. There's one. And there's number two. So once you take those out, the power steering cooler, you can see, is basically free. So what we're gonna have to do is first disconnect one of these lines because there's still fluid in this entire thing. So with either a pan on the bottom or some way to catch it all, what we're gonna do is we're gonna disconnect one of these lines and we're gonna try and evacuate all of this of fluid. So I'm gonna actually take out probably one of these lower ones because that means that all the fluid that's above it can escape as well. So uh, we're gonna take this out. You know what, screw it, we're gonna be taking both clamps off. This might be a little bit difficult to remove just one and slide it off and get the fluid to come out of it. So we're gonna do it this way. So both lines off, we can now pull the cooler out. I may or may not have underestimated how much fluid was actually in there. But the cooler is off. The lines are now bled. So there's nothing in there. There's no more power steering fluid in the lines because it's all inside of here. So we're gonna have to replace all of that, but we first need to disconnect everything else first. So um, I'm gonna pull this off completely. This is the stock cooler. The, the nipples on each one of these are really long. So just keep in mind, you're gonna have to be pulling off that much. So uh, stock one's out. Let's move a little bit further up the line. So what we're gonna have to disconnect is this line here. So this is the stock clamp for this side over here. And we're gonna have to disconnect this one here because we're gonna be reusing this hard line and we're gonna be installing a new line like this, a new one that's made out of rubber to our new cooler. We're also gonna have to do the same kind of thing, but as you can tell, the rubber line doesn't stop until way back here. So we're gonna have to move the windshield wiper reservoir out of the way to get access to basically this clamp for this line. So using the wrench again, we're gonna be taking off the 10 mil bolts that are securing the reservoir up to the body of the car. Okay. 
With the reservoir out of the way, you can see that we have the hard line here on the bottom, and then we have the rubber line here on top. So we need to disconnect this little connector here so that we can take the entire line off of the hard line that's found up here. You can see with the entire reservoir out of the way how much easier it is to get access to this. There very well may be another way to get access to this clamp, but I figured it'd be easier to just take out those couple bolts and then the little sensors down here. Now, here comes the fun part. So we need to disconnect this and then slide the rubber line out from inside this little rubber hanger in here. Now, once you have it at this stage, you're gonna have to slide the, the little clamp off the hose before you can take the hose and pull it through this little intermediary part here. Now with the upper and the lower hose now disconnected from both hard lines, that there will complete the disassembly. So with the old cooler out of the car, we can go ahead and assemble the new upgraded Stillen cooler along with all the lines and fittings that we need to get this installed. So what I have here are the fittings that came included with the kit. The hoses here come included in the kit. Now what doesn't come included is some way to seal each one of these fittings along with the power steering fluid. So this here is full synthetic. If you guys wanna find any of the stuff that you guys see here, you guys can find links in the description box. But what we're gonna start off with doing is we're gonna grab the cooler and we're gonna take off the two little caps that are found on top because we first need to install the fittings right here into them. So they both need to be installed, but before you can just dry install them like this, we need to put a little bit of this Permatex product, which is a thread sealant. So the way that you install this stuff is you basically just load it up on whatever male fitting you have. So because this is a male and this is a male, the only place that we're gonna be putting this product is gonna be on here. So we're first gonna be starting off with the bottom end because this here threads into the cooler itself. Before we put any of the sealant in it, we're gonna first thread it into place just to make sure that we have the proper hardware. Take it out and then put a little bit of the product on the threads. So once you install this on each one of these fittings, you have 24 hours before this stuff sets, which means you have that much time to readjust it should you need to. So you're gonna put a little bit of the product on the threads here, and we're just making sure that we're not gonna get any kind of leaks. So that when we assemble everything, we're not gonna have any problems later. So that there is pretty much all you need. You don't need a lot. After you have that on there, thread it in by hand, and then we're gonna tighten this up just to make it so that this is snug. Now to tighten each one of these, you can use an adjustable wrench or a 29 millimeter socket with a, with a driver on it. Now, right here is where you just can tighten it up. Now I don't have a torque spec for this. So all I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be tightening this until it feels snug. So I'm not trying to basically like cross thread it and I'm not trying to damage it. Because you have the thread sealant along with a little O-ring found on the bottom, you don't really need to torque the crap out of it. So I'm just gonna replicate the exact same thing for this end here. So we're gonna have the inlet and outlet for the cooler installed. Next up is gonna be installing these 90 degree fittings on the top of the cooler itself. So what we're gonna do is basically line this up how it's going to be mounted in the car. So the bracket is going to be basically fitting like this. So you can see how it comes out. This is going to be the front side. So it's gonna be sitting like that, which means we're gonna be putting this bracket here and the other one on the tops facing forward slightly. Now the reason why we wanna do that is so that we can direct these lines so that there's a very minimal amount of bend on the actual hose. The straighter we can make these, not only the better the fluid is gonna be able to flow, but the less stress we're gonna be putting on the actual hose. So with that being said, we're gonna be putting a little bit more of the thread sealant on the male end of the fitting, and then we're gonna just thread this on. Now, if you guys don't exactly nail this the first time, you can move it as long as this sealant is less than 24 hours old. So I'm just gonna have it face slightly forward. So if you guys are looking at this on an angle, you'll be able to see this isn't exactly straight here. It's kind of off to the side. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing for this fitting. Now we're going to be using the OEM hardware. So the two bolts that we removed from the bottom, we're gonna be reusing those for the installation. So with this all ready to go, and these fittings now tight, we can go ahead and install this on the car. So working down here in the wheel well area, we're first going to get started with installing the line that goes in here, and we're gonna fish it up to the hard line that's found behind here. Now the reason why I'm doing that is that I want all of this to fit, and then I only wanna trim one end of the hose instead of trimming two. 
So I'm going to slide this over top of the connector. But before I do that, I'm going to transfer over the old clamps that are on the old hoses. The kit does come with new hardware. However, I find that the OEM stuff works a little bit better. Because there's constant pressure on this, there's not going to be any possibility of it backing off. So using some needle nose pliers, just slide these things off of the old hoses and put them onto the new ones. Go ahead and repeat the exact same thing with this hose here for the bottom one down here. So I'm just going to transfer over these clamps again and then install them onto this new line here. Next up comes installing the rat itself. So what we're going to do is not install the lines first. We're going to first mount up where the, the rad's supposed to go. And then once it's in place, we're going to be able to trim everything up as it's supposed to. So we're going to be able to make the lines the proper length and then secure it up to here. So we're going to be reusing the same 10 millimeter bolts that we took out from the old cooler. So these two lines here need to be hooked up to the tops of this. So the lower of the two hoses, this one here, I'm going to be connecting up to the first port. And then the second of the two, which is the taller one, is going to be going to the last port back here. Now, for these clamps, you don't need to have any hardware to clamp them on. However, just for a precaution, I'm going to be putting the stock clamps um, from the old hoses onto here. So once you have it kind of where you want it, pretty much just get either some scissors or some sort of way of cutting this, and we're going to have to trim this to spec. Because right now, this here is way too long. So I'm going to give this a little bit of slack too. So let's first start with the, the lower hose. So the lower one is going to be going here. So even if we do cut it, let's say too short, there is more than enough hose to do this again. You guys probably don't need to do this, but I like being uh, safe than sorry. So I'm just going to slide this over top and then slide the little hose clamp over top of it. So with the cooler in place, with both lines now snug in place and all the clamps on there, what I'm going to do is just zip tie both of these lines together and I might actually put something in between here just so that the heat doesn't transfer from one side to the other. What I'm telling you guys now that you should have done before doing this is you should have pre-filled this with power steering fluid just so that purging the system is a little bit easier. Now because I'm not a smart guy and this is basically the first time I'm doing this on my Z, haha, um, yeah, I'm going to have to just purge it and basically turn the wheel from left to right so that fluid will basically fill this entire area. Now, because this is also a little bit larger than the OEM cooler, this will take up more fluid. So if you're ever doing a power steering flush or if you just ever want to change the fluid in your system, you're going to be needing more fluid than normal. So just keep that in mind. Next up comes filling the reservoir with the power steering fluid. So this here is a fully synthetic fluid. And what I'm going to be doing is literally filling this until I can't, then turning the wheels from both sides from lock to lock until I can't anymore. Now, what that's going to do is it's going to allow all the fluid that's in the reservoir to drain down into the lines and fill up the little cooler that we now have. Now, it's going to keep going down until it's completely full. So I'm going to keep filling it with this until I can't. Now, to complete this job, make sure you just double and triple check all the connections. Make sure you're not leaking out of anywhere and be sure to top up the reservoir after this has been completed. If you guys get the opportunity to go back to the reservoir, make sure that it's filled maybe even a week or two later just to ensure that everything goes as it's supposed to. Now, that there will pretty much complete everything. We can put the bumper back on and we can do everything else if this is the only thing you guys are doing to the front of your car. However, we're not done yet. We're gonna get started with some other stuff. So because it was raining earlier today, I wasn't able to do the project that I wanted to, which was open up the headlights and modify those. So that video is to come, but this here will complete the entire install for a Stillen or even generic brand power steering cooler. If you guys wanna find any of the products or tools that you guys found in this video, you guys can find some links in the description box. If you guys aren't following me on Instagram, be sure to do it. It takes two seconds. And also consider subscribing if you guys aren't a subscriber. I've got more stuff for the Z coming out. I've got more stuff for the Mini coming out. And my little brother's been a little bit busy on his car too. Anyways, guys, if you have any further questions, comment sections down there. You guys know what to do. Thanks for watching, guys. Catch you in the next one. Peace.